it's really changed. Because I'm the chief of police here. Or members of the Eli Whitney Trades. I've been at an honest mob in my back. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. For YTV. This is Your Yale Week. Hello and welcome to Your Yale Week. I'm Julie Kim and here are this week's top stories. Late Tuesday night, it was announced that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and businessman Donald J. Trump won the Democratic and Republican primaries in Connecticut. In the Democratic primary, Clinton won 27 delegates against Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who received the other 24 delegates. This victory came after Sanders held a rally on the New Haven Green, which attracted thousands of attendees, and Clinton held a number of smaller campaign events in the Elm City on Sunday. Meanwhile, on the Republican side, Trump held rallies in neighboring Waterbury and Bridgeport. In a Wednesday morning email, Yale College Dean Jonathan Holloway announced that the Blue Book, Yale's course catalog and listing of academic policies would only be available online. Holloway cited both decreased demand for a physical blue book and an ability to update the digital version throughout the year as reasons for this change. Finally, a top story. On Wednesday evening, University President Peter Salovey announced that the title Master would be replaced with Head of College, the name of Calhoun College will remain the same, and the two new residential colleges will be named after Anna Pauline Murray and Benjamin Franklin. For more on that, we'll speak to David Scheimer, the beat reporter for Woodbridge Hall at the end of the show. But first, for a brief look at next week, Nicole Daly. Thanks, Julie. Make sure to go out and support our Bulldogs this weekend. On Saturday at 1 p.m., women's lacrosse plays Harvard to be followed by men's lacrosse at 3.30 p.m. The men's team is hoping to recover after two straight losses against Brown and Albany. On Friday, the baseball and softball teams will play doubleheaders against Brown and Providence. On Saturday, both teams will play in New Haven, baseball playing Brown at noon and 3 p.m., and softball playing Brown at 12.30 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. On Friday and Saturday, the men's and women's track and field teams will be competing in Philadelphia at the oldest U.S. track and field competition, the Penn Relays. On Sunday, starting at 10 a.m., Yale will host the Yale Springtime Invitational at the Dwyer Track. The annual music concert, Spring Fling, will be held this Saturday on Old Campus. This year, Janelle Monae will headlight the event, the first female black artist to do so. The concert will be opened by rapper Vince Staples and closed by DJ A-Track. On Friday and Saturday at 8 p.m., the Yale Repertory Theater will present the first performances of Happy Days. The show's run will continue through May 21st and stars two-time Academy Award winner Diane Wiest. On Friday and Saturday, be sure to catch the last two days of the 11th annual Yale Festival of New Italian Cinema at the Whitney Humanities Center. All films are in Italian with English subtitles. Visit yaleitaliancinema.eventbrite.com to reserve free tickets to the screenings. And make sure to pick up your copy of Weekend. This week's cover story is on economic class differences between majors at Yale. Back to you, Julie. Thanks, Nicole. So here we are with David to talk about the recent announcements on Master and Calhoun, as well as the name of the recent um, residential colleges. So David, how serious do you think the proposal of the name change about Calhoun was in the administration? Yeah, I mean, I can't necessarily tell you how seriously they took it inside of the corporation room because yeah. all of their meetings are confidential. But what I can tell you is that from what we know and the data we've collected, students doubted that the administration would change the name. In a survey we conducted over the weekend, which 1,700 undergraduates responded to, only 39% said they expected the title of Calhoun to change, whereas 55% said it should. It's hard to say whether this was really ever a serious debate. I don't think we'll know for quite a long time, but what is sure is that this wasn't necessarily that big of a surprise to a lot of people. So what do you think about the change of master to head of college? Yeah, I mean, I think that oppositely, 70% of students surveyed expected that change. And I think for good reason. Harvard and Princeton eliminated the title in the fall after the emergence of campus-wide protests concerning racism and discrimination. Yale took its time. Changing master requires a change in the university bylaws, which can only happen across two corporation meetings. So it was never going to happen instantaneously. But I think a lot of people expected it to happen. And interestingly enough, in many survey responses we received, a lot of students said this was just a way for the administration to appease students without setting any sort of precedent. So regarding the name announcements of the new residential colleges, um, have you heard the names of Benjamin Franklin or Pauli Mari come up in the conversation? I personally hadn't heard either prior to today. I've talked with President Salovey as well as his senior staff on several occasions about the naming, um, as well as students, faculty, administrators outside of Woodbridge Hall, and I often heard names like Grace Hopper, Thompson, Boucher, Brewster. 
certainly never Franklin, and I hadn't heard Murray, although people have told me that Murray came up in the conversation a couple of months ago. Interestingly enough, Franklin is a personal hero of Charles Johnson, who donated $250 million toward the two new colleges. So there's a clear connection there. It's unclear whether Benjamin Franklin was always going to be the name of one of the two new residential colleges or whether there was a debate within the corporation about the second name or only the first. But I can tell you that I had never heard his name prior to today. He never actually went to Yale. He received an honorary degree. And he actually founded the University of Pennsylvania. And he owned slaves. Um, although he actually advocated for abolition toward the end of his life and freed his own. But I think Murray is a choice that makes a little more sense to people based on preliminary interviews and conversations. She was a person of color, a woman, and very accomplished, and was a Yale graduate, not an honorary degree recipient solely. And from what I can tell, people are excited about her. Sir, thank you, David. And from all of us here at YTV, have a great weekend. My name is Brian DeAngelis. I'm a third year PhD student in neuroscience here at Yale. And I'm William Gray. I'm a fourth year student in pharmacology. Uh, studying infectious diseases. And not with us here today, but an integral part of our team is Zainab Aslam. And